Those Damn Ross Kids is a podcast for adults, and the opinions expressed do not reflect the opinions of our employers or even ourselves. We'd like to hear from you. Give us a call at 419-528-TDRK to leave a voicemail, and we just may play it on the show. Oh, man. Sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. What? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> being you. <laughs> You're just mirroring me. Yeah. Ah, it's been it's been a rough day. I didn't wow. sleep. I didn't sleep at all last night. Really? The hard Did questions you... keep me up. Hmm. Yeah. Such as, are cheese nips an inherently racist product? I thought that's what they called me in gym class. <laughs> 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 Those Damn Ross Kids, a conversation between brothers, featuring Chris and Cole Ross. Hey Chris, what episode is this? Dude, I, I have no idea. You don't? No, because we're, you know, we're recording and multiples and trying to put some in the skank bank. Right. Yeah, we're trying to get ahead, like yeah. you do, right? So I have no, I have no idea. You have I mean, no, uh, okay, no, no clue. No, okay. So it's episode one hundred and twenty-seven of what? The comedy podcast, those damn Ross kids. I am Chris, and I am Cole. Yeah, there we go. Okay, You're, you sound about as confused as our listeners would be. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the recording stuff will be uh, evened out pretty soon. It's just. We really want to not, um, you know, go away for a while, as we do. And so I, I'd say I, I, I declared a policy. Let's get a couple ahead. So we're we're recording this on Valentine's Day, although you're not going to hear it until, uh, you know, uh, let's see here, the 25th of February. So, you know, two, here we two, are. Ooh, two days after my birthday. True. True. So hug your sweetheart and think about how Chris is one year older, I guess. I will turn 42. Yep. And you don't look a day over 60. Right? I know, right? No, no. Don't you hate that? When, when we, oh, you don't look at it's a, it's a, it's not like a, it's not even a dad joke. It's like a, it's like a, a, a weird it's uncle an joke. Oncology ward joke. <laughs> no, it's a progeria ward joke. I don't know what that is. That's Jack disease. Probably has to do with oceanography. Uh, no, no, that's James Can James Cameron Ward. That's where you go down too fast. <laughs> that's where you get the bands. I thought that was coming up, or is it both? Uh, you know what? I think it's coming up. That's when you get the nitrogen bubbles in your blood, and you go crazy, and then that's like a, a and then a hippie cuts your neck open and huffs the nitrous out of you, and he's like, "Oh, like, ha, ha. See, because nitrous oxide, commonly known as laughing gas, um, potentially could be the thing that is forming in your blood as you rise too quickly. You know, I don't have to explain myself to you. No, I mean, I thought that that's what we do here. Okay. <laughs> what, me explain? Cole yeah, explains just things? Explained. Cole explains himself and things tangentially related to him. Mm, okay, cool. Yeah, that in the does, world, that, that 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 doesn't cut deep or anything. No, it's fine. <laughs> okay, you'll be all right, baby bird. Yeah, I, 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 increasingly, I don't know anymore. But Chris, we tell stories. Can you tell me a story? I can. Okay. Uh, Justin Bieber is a pop star. Was a pop star. Now he's a noted criminal. Well, noted no. criminal mastermind, <laughs> Justin Bieber. He used to could. Oh, well, you know. But then he'll make some kind of like weird comeback. He'll do porn for a while, you know, <laughs> do the Branson circuit, get offered a sweet gig in Vegas, but say, I don't want to sell out like that, man. And then he'll, you know, get, get he'll, he'll throw everything away and move to Argentina where he'll, uh, you know, uh, a close relative back home will die and he'll come back and throw like one last final, like hurrah, like, you know, this was my, you know, this was, he was my manager. Right, and I want to honor I want to honor him for making my career by by getting the band back together and taking a whole bunch of Xanax and smoking a bunch of weed and being the most awesome dude ever and getting on top of that stage and just doing it, baby, doing it. That's the name of new, of the new song, doing it, baby, doing it. <laughs> but continue. 
I think that he he actually voices the the screams of a of a uh, orgasmic squirting hentai character. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a, it's it's a it's a it's not him doing it every time. It's like some stock stuff from uh, from recording sessions, testing the upper levels of the microphone. He diarrheas every time he does it. Uh, yeah, well, the character does. You, you, no, he you, does. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's where they got the uh, the inspiration for the uh, for the character for the character's quirk, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I think that everything has a reason. Squirtle. But you were gonna, you were going to say a <laughs> squirtle. <laughs> Pokemon number, oh man, five, I think. Yeah, somebody well, else, somebody good, will correct me. I don't good know. enough. Good enough. But, all right, so as pop stars are, uh, as they tend to do, uh, they rent private jets. And uh, Justin Bieber evidently does that as well. Um, flying from Canada to New Jersey for um, the Super Bowl back when that happened. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, evidently the the people on the plane, including Biebs and the dad. Uh, <laughs> Which is a nice, that's a great buddy cop film. <laughs> matching flare like jeans. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, they were smoking so much pot on the plane that the pilots had to wear oxi- oxygen masks. <laughs> that is depraved. Yeah, a flight attendant also says Bieber and his dad harassed her and were extremely verbally abusive. Uh, the captain asked Bieber multiple times to stop smoking so much marijuana. And <laughs> just, just, stop just in general, like get your life back. <laughs> the flight attendant eventually fled to the cockpit and stayed there for the remainder of the flight. That is hilarious. Huh. Yeah. So the, the pilots on that jet were, you know. You know what? I think that he's a role model. I want to be like him. I want to be like him. It's the sequel to Like Mike. Instead, it is uh, Lil Bow Wow or Lil Romeo or whichever one of those that was learning to be like Beeb. It's like Beeb like me. So it's Lil Cornrow. <laughs> yeah, Lil Cornrow starting in Beeb like me. <laughs> Dude, I want to Beeb like you. <laughs> yeah. How do you Beeb so hard? Oh, man. By, by definition, nobody can Beeb harder than me. <laughs> or the world will, ex- will explode. Yeah. I just. <laughs> Can can B beep so hard that nobody else could beep harder than him? The B beeps in the woods. Yeah. No, the, does a B beep in the woods? Well, I, I I would actually counter that with with B beep B beep B beep B beep beep. I mean, I, I just want to take that bit to its logical extension, <laughs> to its logical no, I, conclusion. I think it ended with "Does a bear shit in the woods?" Converted over to "Does a bee beep in the woods?" Does a bee beep in the bee? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. So I take umbrage at anybody like getting upset at Justin Bieber for doing anything besides just breaking the law. You take soccer shorts. What? Umbrage, umbro. <laughs> I don't- that what, what kind of joke was that? That, re, that requires knowledge those? of no. Or were, like, were those like Jenkos or parachute pants or whatever? They were like uh, sequins worked into textiles. Okay, yeah, they they weren't add ons. They were they were shorts that people wore back yeah. in the early nineties. Sw- swing and a miss on my part, I guess. Right, it was before Adidas. I think how long has Adidas been around? I feel like that's I think been. It was before Adidas was big. No, I, th- I think that the like the the Adidas company actually made uh, uh, footwear for the Nazis. <laughs> Did they really? Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. That's um, I- I'm pretty sure actually <laughs> that they did. You know, just like, uh, what is it, Hugo Boss made all of the SS uniforms. No, I saw it. Yeah. It was like, what it auctioned last week, it was like 450000 for the original Oh, God. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Marker. Gotcha. <laughs> no, no, it, that, was, that wasn't even a marker. That was me accidentally stopping the recording. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. No, I put a marker there. <laughs> no, the Adidas company... Um, <laughs> Founded in uh, 1924. There's only one uh, reference to Nazism in the Wikipedia page, but I'm pretty sure I could get that. It's a German company uh, founded by Adolf Dossier, hence Adidas. Close enough. Yeah. All day I dream about sports. (laughs) As opposed to... Yeah, so let's just brush the Adolf thing under the rug. Um, Wow, I kind of thought that I was making that up. But it's real? (laughs) Okay, Adidas, uh, Nazi, 
Oh, yeah. In the 1930s, both Dossler uh, brothers joined the Nazi party. Wow. I was reaching real, really far, really, really far back. Hmm. Huh. So. History becomes future. Yeah. No, I, I think that we're living in the days of future past. Hmm. Also, this episode is being sponsored by the X-Men movie Days of Future Past. But, uh, but, but I don't know. When, so, so, so when was, does that come out? Uh, I think like in 2015. Yesterday. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. So, so I, I just, I get upset when old people are like, our children, blah. Well, okay. So we don't talk about that often, but you're a parent. How do you feel about this? <laughs> are you going to let a young person listen to his music now that he's, you know, you, you know, he's a, he's a meth, or not, yeah, he's a meth smoking pill head. Who, Bieber? Yeah. No, no, don't. No? Children need not apply. Children need not apply. Okay. Yeah. That's a pretty baller story that the pilots had to wear oxygen masks, though. I mean, it's the closest thing we got to, like, back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, this is, uh, this is like Jagger. Yeah, huh. when they were shooting heroin into the veins in their dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were, they, were, they were spitting opium into each other's eyes. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, With no. members. Okay, so 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 here here's a thing. Here's a thing. It's just in the interest of uh, in the interest of sparing everybody else on the plane. Why don't they uh, affix some kind of rudimentary carburetor to the oxygen system of the plane? Right. So you know how the emergency mass. So you so so you yanked so you yank the mask down and you 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 put the rubber band around the back of your head. Don't be alarmed. Just because the bag isn't inflated, don't mean it ain't being filled with them dank nugs. <laughs> dank nugs. Yeah. I mean, so if if you're renting a private jet, why don't you just own one and just totally retrofit it out? Right? Nugs on a plane? Maybe. I don't know. So speaking of substances, Chris, are you familiar with the peer pressure drinking game called Neck Nominate? <laughs> no. No. It has nothing to do with the Book of the Dead from the HP Lovecraft Cthulhu mythos. No, no. Neck Nominate is uh it's a game that it, it's it is uh, believed that it uh started in Australia and it's gone over to Britain where it is uh blamed in the deaths of four young men, um all of them under the age of 30. So, here are the rules, right? Uh one person who starts the chain necks a uh large beverage, okay? Uh, and that is that that, that is uh, Anglo slang, I guess, for drinking a very large, uh, you know, beverage all in one go. We would call it okay. chugging, right? Sure. Yeah. So so they so so they chug their they, they neck their beverages in the loo, right? And you do this, <laughs> come come necking. Oh God! That's all I can think about. Okay. <laughs> Just in general, like as as a as a rule of thumb. All day I dream about. Okay, cool. You don't need to say it again because it's real gross. No. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. You tape yourself doing it on camera, right? And then you put it on YouTube. And uh, at the end of you, you know, doing this thing, like the... the, the at the video, end of YouTubing. At the end of YouTubing, <laughs> um, you look into the camera and you call out one of your particular friends. So you say, Stephen, I want you to blank. Otherwise, you are... Otherwise, you ain't shit. Okay, okay. So it's a, so so it's a peer pressure game. It's you know it's it's dissing. If the other person doesn't uh, if the other person doesn't rise to the challenge, then they are then you know they they, they lose they lose power in their peer group vis a vis um, you know the, uh, the 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 internet. So then the next person has to do it and match the challenge and one up it. And so it starts out like the the first video that I saw was a guy drinking. Oh gosh, what's that like black licorice liqueur like like sambuca or kombucha or something? Uh Jaeger. Yeah, no no, it wasn't it wasn't exactly Jaeger. It was like clear. I've had it before. It's real gross. Um but uh Metoxa. Um maybe m- 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 minoxidil? Um anus? Yeah, amoxicillin, yeah. Um and so drinking just like in one go a pint glass full of the stuff. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, and looking in and saying "go." Oh my god! So, I'd rather, like, I'd rather like the floor mat at a Cracker Barrel. 
<laughs> so yeah, so you nominate a friend to outdo you, to, to, to outdo you, and then all of a sudden you have things like you know doing a toilet bowl keg stand, where one video that I saw involved pouring out a whole fifth of vodka into a toilet, and then having two buddies hold you upside down and lower your head into it. <laughs> Sounds like a fun game to watch. Uh, um, <laughs> one woman uh, rose to the challenge by going to a supermarket with a big old glass of liquor and stripping down to lingerie um lingerie rather and um uh why did i say that so weird because i'm actually looking at the word and it's a very weird word and uh drinking it there one person blended up a dead mouse and drank that yeah so it very quickly gets out of hand as we saw it resulted in four deaths so but here's how weird it is because like 20 years ago that would have just been a bunch of people peer pressuring each other into drinking way too much yeah it would have been that 70s show hmm <laughs> yeah i suppose they'd be in a basement what's that couch they'd be in a basement with a couch yeah yeah no youtube but it, but it would just be uh it would, it would just be a uh um you know a regular thing like once the internet gets involved i don't think that you'd have people grinding up mice <clears throat> You know, like like if you were just like at a buddy's house on a weekend when his parents were away, you wouldn't be grinding up mice, would you? No, nah, you'd just be drinking some brewskis. Drinking some, some brewskis, having, having some good fun. Maybe mm-hmm. you know, people would ruin their lives so much better when it was more chill. But <clears throat> when you know, it wasn't public. Yeah, when it wasn't public, when there wasn't mad cred on the line. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, there are all these people like the, uh, the, the that, that are saying. What was it called again? Necronomicon. Yeah, not the Necronomicon. That is exactly what I said it wasn't. If we say "Eh," one more time, we're going to summon the dread forces. But Hmm. it's... um, Beetlejuice. (laughs) Okay, we got two more. Um, Actually, no, one more. Two more, and then it comes. No, but uh, but then you have like like legislatures saying, ah, it's the schools who should fix this, and "Ah, Facebook should do blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't know. I, I'm not receptive to that, but I need a speech from the prime minister. I know we have to address this from the very from the very top of the halls of power. <sighs> I don't know. Neck nominate. <laughs> Should we invent the drinking game right now? <laughs> no, I was just thinking about the Trojan Man voice telling kids not to play Necronama. Whatever. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I don't know substances. I just feel like there's there's like not an awful lot you can do all said and done to keep people from doing that kind of stuff. Probably not. They're yeah. kids. Yeah, they're, they're they're kids and they're going to do stupid stuff. That's what they do. It's real. I mean, okay, so they're not kids. They're all they, they were all listed as being under thirty. So one of them was at least twenty nine and a half. So like, okay. Well, here's the thing: is that they're not doing stupid enough stuff. Okay. And the reason being is that they're living to adulthood, and and then they're reproducing. They need to die from this because they're that stupid, and that way they don't grow up and have more stupid people. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's a... Uh, we, we don't have enough of this. <laughs> that, that, that's a pretty... I mean, taken out into its full, into its full uh, uh, logical extent, uh, that's a pretty chilling philosophy. <laughs> and, like, I'm all for laughing at the Darwin Awards. But, uh, you know, like... No, I mean, I, I scratch safety stickers and rip as many safety labels off of stuff in stores as possible. Oh yeah, so you're, you're you're trying to accelerate. Oh, so you're so you're uh, you, you're like a Batman villain. You're social Darwinist man. You can put a sticker on most anything that says "not for anus." Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think legally it has to be. <laughs> that gets really confusing with Preparation H. How far are we going to go? No, you're 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 you're, uh, you're 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 a Batman villain. You're a social Darwinist man. If if God wanted you to live, he wouldn't have made you poor, right? Well, that's yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just it's it, it's hard, and I think that I think that as we get more isolated from each other, um, especially with like YouTube and like, haha, you're my friend. I'm going to kill you with alcohol or make you kill yourself. Fuck, who's who's responsible? Ah, <laughs> like it's it's easier and easier to take that view. I don't because... think we have an an income inequality gap. I think we have an opportunity to die from stupidity gap. Yeah, I suppose, but. Like if you die because like your your dank mugs got your got your pilot too high 
from you know, from a contact high, right? Yeah. That's you know that 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 I think is a pretty it is as much of an opportunity to kill you and seventeen other people as you know just taking a <laughs> taking one of these to the dome, right? Taking a I mouse to the so. dome, a toilet mouse to the dome. You gotta gotta get up to get down. Hmm. You have to spend money to make money. Yeah, neck nominate. Neck nominate. <laughs> why does that? Why is that so funny? I don't know. Speaking of terrifying, what do you think about crocodiles? I don't know if I'm as afraid of them as I am of alligators, but that's mostly because alligators are what we have around here. Mm -hmm. Well, researchers have done some studying uh, of the crocodile in the wild and found that they uh, can climb and perch in trees as high as uh, 12 feet off the ground. Oh, okay. So you're out there looking for something that vaguely looks like a log in some in some uh, dark water. And you're not looking for something in the trees that looks vaguely like a loggy branch. <laughs> does that rock look like ah? <laughs> does does that rock look like a bunch of teeth in my face? Ah! Does that limb look like a crocodile? <laughs> does does this limb look like a limb that's been bit off <laughs> by a crocodile? They uh, did the studying in Mississippi, Columbia, and along the Nile. Hmm. Yeah. So that's a pretty Columbia, South Carolina? Columbia, I believe. Oh, the, uh, oh Columbia, the country. Sorry. Yeah, with, that with, one. With, with our U.S.-centric worldview, it's hard to, it's hard to recognize that there are other places uh, with names yeah. of stuff. It was uh, reported, the, the research was reported in uh, herpetology notes, not what I thought that would have been about. <laughs> You know what's weird? I was thinking about the word herpetology earlier today for specifically that reason. <laughs> Thirteen feet off the ground, and as far as six feet, uh, sixteen feet down a branch. Hmm. Oh, okay. Make, so, so is this like what it what it can survive? Seven and a half feet from uh, death at any given moment. Ah, <sighs> man. At first, I was afraid to walk underneath trees because of sap and such. This is a whole other thing. So the way the, the way that this is phrased, so when you talk about, oh, they can drop from as much as 13 feet or so, th there are two ways that could shake out, which is maybe that's as high as they can climb about or as high as, high as they know they need to to achieve maximum tooth velocity, or that's as high as they can survive dropping. <laughs> so what you have... <laughs> Is a bunch of alligators that, like cats, climb up too high, are afraid to drop, and just stay there until some kind of rogue fireman comes and rescues it. No, I think that they might be circus crocs because evidently the smaller crocs could go higher and further than than their larger counterparts, and all were somewhat skittish when approached. They uh, they all fell into the water. <laughs> Jeez, it! It's the feds. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know where these researchers were from, but the 1920s, I guess. I'm not reading from journalism. <laughs> no, no. Why would you want to state that? State what? <laughs> well, the the researchers is like they might as well put it in quotes because it doesn't say like who they were that did the researching. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, no. So they don't say like oh, which university it was out of. University or? of Tennessee. Huh. Sorry. I'm ignorant. So whenever I see a study like this, and I look at plenty of them for the for, you know, for the purposes of the show, I can't help but think that all of it is somehow linked back to military research. And um, they're like, what kind of... Have tree crocs? <laughs> <laughs> or like you know how can we how can we use weaponized tree crocs to inform our like dive suits you know for uh the the, the people that were shooting out of like missile launchers into enemy uh, into enemy land you know enemy enemy territory right i just kind of like all this stuff that doesn't make any sense to us like you know ha, ha, that's funny we're talking about it on the podcast how much of it is being funded by the dod in order to you know, fulfill some kind of, kind of nefarious death purpose. I'm just glad it's not corporations. Well, you know, it, it, it all comes from corporations, right? 
you know, it's military well, contractors. Yeah, you know, when but... I when, when I say the when I say the DoD, you know, they, they they outsource a bunch of this stuff. You know, to like contractors. You know, so you've got Boeing out there uh, with some kind of crazy crocodile lab dropping them from fifteen, twenty, fifty feet, pushing the limits of what God really intended. In order to, in order to, you know, figure out how we can kill brown people, you know, people better. Operation Wally Drop. Who <laughs> <laughs> was who was in that movie? That was uh, that was Dennis Hopper. Um, <laughs> Den- Dennis and that Hopper. black guy with with white eyes. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was Dennis Hopper and uh, uh, Randy Quaid and Dennis Quaid. It was an all Dennis cast. <laughs> all Quaid's all the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Channel thirty three and a half. What's that a reference to? I don't know. Huh. Okay. Huh. Why does know. everything have to be a reference? I don't know. You just you said this weird nonsense thing. And I figured yeah. that it might have been just, like you, you may have just been saying it uh Mind's you know. eye. What? Mind's eye. Okay. Okay, so it just like you just you just said that thing with no with no significance attached to it. From my brain cube, man. From, from yeah. <laughs> you know what? I I, I much preferred the, uh, the 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 oh man. I'm not fast enough to come up with some kind of brain pun on Xbox. So oh well. But speaking of mind's eye, uh, Chris, we we all know that horses have weird names. Right. Yeah, yeah, we do. Such as oh. you know has has been uh, immortalized in the uh, in the great podcast. Oh uh, yeah, dude, uh, with the game horse weed or mind's eye. Um, but uh, let me let me give you three of them right now, okay? My dancing angel, bikini bombshell, and dynasty edition. These are weeds. No, these are all horses that tested positive for Viagra. Say it again now. Okay. My Dancing Angel. Blonde Bombshell. Bikini Bombshell. Oh. Dynasty Edition. All tested positive for Viagra. <laughs> now, that's a, now that's a horse of a very purple color. Uh, no. So <laughs> the trainer was uh, suspended for 16 years and fined $40,000 after uh, the New Mexico Racing Commission found uh, uh, traces of the active ingredients of Viagra in these three horses. Okay. He's all like, oh, the vet gave me this weird anti-bleeding cream. And I had to rub it on there, and it has a stuff, blah, blah, blah. But ho- horse trainers are using Viagra all the time as a way to juice the wheeze. Okay? Really? Yeah. No, no, you get those 16 weird... 16 years? Yeah. That's, that's like forever. You could... You could... What, you could raise a child to adulthood kinda, in that time. What, what, you could raise that child to the age of majority in that time in judge, certain states. Judge Dread Council made that up. <laughs> no, it's the it's the New Mexico Racing Commission, which I don't know why he would do this. He's playing he's playing a high stakes game. It's the, uh, the, the that is the most stringent board in the entire U.S. Everyone he had, knows he it. had the most to, he had the most to lose. I know nothing about racehorses aside from they got weird names, and like I knew that. Like you do not fuck with Dan Smith down at the N- at the NMRC, okay? So this guy, he's getting ready to uh, race <laughs> at the time trials for the Rambo Futurity at Ruidiso Downs on July fifth, and he's like, nope. And he's got this fourth one that kind of like is you know maybe possibly on the fence about it, you know PJ Chicken Black. <laughs> so like. It's just I, I don't know. I think that this is a scandal that's going to rock the that's going to rock everything. And you know, just because you want to juice up your horses for those weirdos with their handy cams, okay? You'd, you'd get less time for beating the manager of KFC to death with an orphan leg. <laughs> Extra crispy or regular? <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay. Well, when it's you know, if, they, if they're a tall enough orphan, if they're one of those potential future athletes, you know, you have enough. Yeah, you, you have enough. <laughs> Leg meat to do a, to do a hybrid style. Say you know? hello to part of my little friend. <laughs> His name is Pepe. <laughs> um, yeah. 
<laughs> so he had to forfeit eight thousand dollars in purses awarded to the horses. Oh, God. So like these horses didn't do anything, and now their horse college fund in is the, gone. In the in the horse <laughs> world, eight thousand dollars is just jump change. Yeah, no, no. Like, do you know how many oats that could buy? Ouch. Like none. That could buy no oats. <laughs> that 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 economy, the scientific t- formula horse oats. Oh come on! They tip the mechanical rabbit that much when they win, <laughs> right? Just as a courtesy. That's just like well, you know, that's just fuck you money. No 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 Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so like the reason they do this, just for anybody who's curious, Viagra is a cardiovascular medicine, and they put it, you know, they they put it in these horses to give them those massive erections to tie them off. Yeah, but also, um, you know, because it increases blood throughput and uh, makes them go faster. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I mean, a horse with four legs can race really fast, but what about a horse with five? <laughs> well, no, like that one just drags. <laughs> like it's like a rudder. Like it adds stability, but but it increases drag. So you know, it's like a horse spoiler, except it's on the bottom. Call them pogo pills. <laughs> we call them pogo pills. Yeah, I don't know. So I feel like you were more involved. Uh, with this than I was because I was mostly playing um, Game Boy back in the back in the mobile home or back in the RV. But like our mm. grandparents used to do a lot of catering for a notable Central Ohio um, like uh, horse racing track, right? Like they would go there and they would you know make food for all these like Richie McTri- Rick- Rick- uh, Richardsons out there brushing their horses every day. I don't have any weird horse person stories. Do you? No, I don't have any weird horse person stories. Oh, I just wanted to see. And I don't think this is a notable horse race either. No? I, nah, I don't think so. I think it was on TV once. Don't they do like the brown, isn't that the brown jug or something? I feel like that's actually kind yeah, of, I, think... I feel like in that world, you know, I, I mean, it's no, it is, it is no uh, rainbow futures, but. I feel like the hat for this race is a fedora and the drink is a mint four loco. <laughs> And I like a good fedora, like an antique one. Uh, I don't even know. Let's put it this way. That that hat didn't come in a box. <laughs> that hat was a box. It was a Burger King. <laughs> that, has, th- that fedora used to be a box of Miller Lite. <laughs> Miller Lite fedora. Oh, man. Do you have a story for me, Chris? I do. Up in Canada, man. The story reads, a pair of jaunty polka dotted vending machines in Vancouver are selling something unusual. Crack pipes for a quarter. <laughs> they have been installed to make sure addicts have a cheap, reliable source of pipes, which, why, what, why not, mm-hmm. right? They don't run the risk of then sharing pipes or pipes that are chipped or broken as, uh, you know, flu, cold, cold sores, HIV, if you cut your lip on the pipe, could be... Uh, Passed from person to person, or crackhead to crackhead. <laughs> okay, kind of a weird distinction to draw, but I'll bite. It says, uh, they, they says, hey, <laughs> right. they, so it says to Mabel, says, says. so they <laughs> says, um, they, <laughs> this says, um, this is one piece of a larger puzzle. You have to have treatment, you have to have detox, you have to have safe spaces to use your drugs, and you have to have safe and clean supplies. The Canadian government, however, says it firmly opposes uh, the, this initiative, and the government would like to focus on ways to end drug use, including limiting access to drug paraphernalia. Hmm. Crack pipe bending machines, Canada. How much are they charging for them? 25 cents. Really? Yeah. Huh. Eight for a loony. <laughs> Oh man, five bees to a quarter. They used to say. So no, I had an onion on my belt. <laughs> it's a style at the time. I, so I have like a weird story about this. I was downtown in Cincinnati, and there aren't a, there are there are not an awful lot of uh, gas stations. So I went to kind of a seedy one, and uh, my my tire was low, and I didn't have a gas or, or I didn't have a tire pressure gauge. So I walked into the I walked in there saying like, "Hey, do you guys have any tire pressure gauges? I want to check my, my 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 PSI to make sure I don't have a blowout because I think I was like down here visiting for work a couple years ago or something like that." Yeah, and they yeah. said, and they said, "No, 
we actually cannot sell tire gauges here at this gas station because all that happens is we get crackheads coming in to buy them to turn them into pipes. Which is crazy because every tire gauge I've like used for the past, let's say, five years has been made of plastic. So are they single use at that point or what? I don't know. Don't you use a blowtorch? I would think that it would be harder to get a blowtorch. I don't think that crackheads use blowtorches. <laughs> what? Where, where do you think they're going to get, like, think, you think they're holding up people for their money with just, like, their hands in the shape of a gun and their coat? I don't, like think, gonna... all, I don't think most crackheads are Bond villains. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think about flamethrower. I'm not talking about, like, something that lets you roast a platoon of, you know. You know, Koreans. I'm talking about a like platoon of Adidas employees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you got to give them because they run real fast. <laughs> Crackheads. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, for at least for like about ten minutes, and then they stop. Yeah, because they're they're winded. They spend all their time smoking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I'm talking about like a like like a like a butane torch or a blow, you know, like a blow torch, right? Yeah. That's, that's what Jesse does in Breaking Bad. I don't know. I learned it from you, Aaron Paul. Uh, no, I think they use lighters. Lighters? Will, 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 will that really get it hot enough, though? I think so. I think huh. you just have to light it on fire. Yeah, I say this as I'm playing with a barbecue lighter, but okay. Oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, one day I'll feed you the world barbecue lighter. I'm running with scissors. Yeah. So let's see here. Um, we, we were talking about crazy long sentences, but how about this? How about this? How about being banned from the internet for life? Okay. How could you do that? Well, all it takes is one judge. So there's this guy. One judge in the South? No, no. This is in Wisconsin. Oh. It's about wow. as north as you can get. So there's hmm. this guy. His name's Jason Willis. He looks kind of like Kyle Gass from uh, Tenacious D. Um, he pulls a prank, a series of dangerous pranks on his neighbor, really, uh, uh, telling internet strangers on Craigslist to show up at his neighbor's house naked. <laughs> so his neighbor opens the door, finds a man in a trench coat. He opens it up, um, reveals his dong, says this neighbor, he had my full name, he knew my address, and he said, oh, I got it off Craigslist. You put an ad on there. Just being helpful, you silly, you dummy. I think we've talked about this. No, this was this yeah, was well, here I think this happened again. Okay, so <laughs> this is this has happened a lot. Uh and in yeah, yeah, it's a I mean, aside I mean, from potentially it's a really good prank. It's a really good prank. <laughs> like as long as nobody gets sex murdered, you're okay. Like so like oh, it's uncomfortable, like oh, you know, I I think it's better than ordering pizzas because at the very at the very most what you're doing is like, you know, inconveniencing a pervert. But, like, you know, if somebody's committed enough to being a pervert, like, they probably didn't have that much else happening anyway. To catch a pervert. <laughs> That's what they had to change the show into after after that one guy killed himself. Didn't do that well at all. So the notable part of this, aside from that sweet prank, um, is uh, that, the, the, that after he pled guilty, uh, the judge said, if you want to drive drunk, you're not allowed to drive. To me, a public uh, the public availabil- uh, availability of the internet uh, to use it the way he did is unconscionable. So this guy, this cow gas looking guy, says you have you know, like you have thirty days to disconnect your internet service, and after that, you are not allowed to uh, <laughs> you are not allowed to use the internet anymore by government law, by government rule. I don't know how that's enforceable. Ah, no, I just. Like those, like that kind of ruling is fun in fiction, honestly. Unless he had like a dirty bomb ankle bracelet thing. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Well, so, it's, so like, like drives, he just, like walk, he, he just he, walked around while being radiated and would make all electronics around him just short out. Oh, oh! If he was like a walking EMP, like basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like every time he tries to grab somebody's phone, oh, it'd be like the reverse of King Midas, except yeah. everything he touches turns to Time Warner cable. It'd be like the opposite pole of when Ernest gets magnetized and Ernest goes to jail. <laughs> uh, uh, I haven't seen Ernest in forever. I think it's because he died 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, 
Well, that doesn't stop the movies from playing. Mm. <laughs> well, no, it was in his it was in his will. He said his, his life's work. He, he said, "After I die, burn all the DVDs, Vern." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they run a marathon on ABC Family every year. On what day? <laughs> the anniversary his, of his birth the and his death. Anniversary of, of his death. Okay, it's the same day. He died on his birthday. Did you know that? Did he really? No, no. Probably but not. I said it with a lot of authority, didn't I? You did. Yeah. Like, no, I, I don't believe it. I'm working on that. I? Yeah. No. Why would I lie it's about a, it's that? It's of no consequence. You have to be psychotic to lie about that. <laughs> huh. I don't know. But yeah, I I, I, I I can't help but think that that is like some kind of man without a country level horse shit. Like yeah, <laughs> you will never be able to uh to set foot on any on any sovereign soil. You must you must go around. Like that could actually be like a real economic hindrance. You know, depending on how what that guy does, he probably can no longer have a career. Just for just just for pulling the whole most hilarious prank he possibly can. <laughs> the smooth, long lasting flavor of Paul Malls. What? That's James Varney or whatever his name was. Oh yeah, Jim Varney. Yeah, James. That's what they called him. At his, That's what they called him at his school. confirmation. Yeah. yeah, James Varney. Hey, an explosion has rocked a New Hampshire, uh, a small town in New Hampshire. A uh, yeah, it shattered windows, shook walls, and it sent at least fifteen people to the hospital. The explosion was at a ball bearing plant. I heard this. Okay. Like 16 people are injured, right? Yeah, 15 people are injured. Yeah, nobody died. How many the of the New- How many of those were at crotch level? At the New Hampshire at Hampshire Ball Bearing Incorporated plant. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so there's just a sign in the front of that building that says danger. Building may become Claymore mine. Hmm. Cause of the explosion is under investigation. Yeah, <laughs> when you when you work in a claymore mine factory, four hundred and fifty people were working at the ball bearing plant when it exploded. <laughs> I mean, hang on a minute. Okay, you can pack a a, a pressure cooker with ball, with ball bearings and set it off at a marathon, and like two hundred people get just ripped to shreds. Yeah, but. 450 people are working in a three-story contained building, and it explodes full of ball bearings, and 15 people get hurt. Okay. Okay. What's next? Continue. Follow this. There is no There what is goes? no Jesus, man. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> that, that these merchants of death were not... Uh, were the, that these merchants of death were spared their bitter reward? Basically, yeah. Yeah. No, you don't think that it might just be because, like, maybe not everybody was around where the localization of that of that explosion that maybe it wasn't intentionally placed to hurt as many people as possible. The that maybe... plant blew up. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Okay, okay. So the whole plant blew up. <laughs> so an innocent marathon crowd is ruined forever, whereas these people who huh. that deserved it, yeah, that, that are worked... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because they work at a, a bomb factory. Well, yeah. No, no. Maybe this people person... more guilty than these than these guys are the people who make pressure cookers. I know. Huh. It's all coming together, Chris. I think we should vote for Ron Paul. Probably. Yeah. Huh. It's our eye of three sixteen. What? Nothing. <laughs> I'll get back to it in editing. Huh. Well, since we're up there in the in the Northeast, why don't we talk about a, a, a Rochester, New York bait shop called Hooked on Fishing? Okay, Worked for me, yeah. And uh, this dude um, comes into work one day and uh, sees something strange on the floor. Rewind to the previous night. Guy is trying to break into the bait shop, presumably to steal the twenty dollars and fifty cents in the till. And uh, he opens up the door, you know, he jimmies it open, and he's startled, he's shocked, he hears a voice. Oh, no, I better run. Leaves. What was on the wall, Chris? I, what? What was on the wall? Think. Swordfish. Like, like 1998. Think. The, 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 the infomercial craze that swept the nation. 
uh, Pocket Fisherman. No, no, that was actually like the like the early nineties. It has nothing to do with Ron Popeil. It has everything to do with uh, with uh, with Bobby McFerrin. Well, Don't worry, that? be happy. Okay. Don't worry, be happy. Bait shop. Chris, I'm going to inception this. You're going to be like, you're going to figure out who Kaiser Soze is at the end of it. I can't get much more explicit. It's a bait shop. What does he have on his wall that is triggered by motion, possibly of a door opening up? Badass Billy Bass. Big mouth Billy the Bass. Oh, well. Spook the thief. (laughs) Cues the song. (laughs) The fish turns his head and looks. Looks and looks at this guy, dead in the dead with his dead eyes, and sings "Don't worry, be happy" as the thief absconds into the evening. Timothy Hutton. Who knows how many lives the Big Mouth Billy Bass has saved? I think I I think I knew who, who was trying to rob the bait shop. Who? Max Perlich. Okay. Look him up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Googling, booling, Perlich. He's been on the hook for a whole string of them. <laughs> okay. He's an actor. And he a is. small part. I, I don't understand. What's you the connection? Look at his picture. Uh, he's got... He looks like somebody who would rob a beach shop. <laughs> yes, he does. How do you know of this guy? I don't I don't quite understand. Is it, is it because he was in Blow? No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with that. He was in a movie I watched last night called um, Beautiful Girls. Hmm. Okay. Was it a good movie? Would you recommend it? I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's something I watch like maybe two or three times a year. Okay. Huh. Has a young Natalie Portman in it. It does. Yeah. Matt Dillon. For, for 13. Mm. What? It also has Timothy Hutton. I don't know who Timothy Hutton is. You just said his name. What? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I said Matt Dillon. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that's that's what I said. You said Timothy Hutton. No. Uma Thurman, Rosie O'Donnell. Wow. Annabeth Gish. Yeah. These are these are all people who are in a movie. Nira Sorvino. Huh. Yeah, lots of people are in that. Yeah, Martha Plimpton. Lots of people with careers. Yeah. Oh man, I wish I had one of those. But yeah, but just <laughs> think about it. How many people put AirSats um, security systems on their wall when they got a Big Mouth Billy Bass for Christmas? What right? a badass Billy Bass. Uh, maybe there was like a version of it that like saying Ace of Spades by Motorhead. <laughs> yeah, extra muscles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it was, it, it, was, it was actually like a, like a sea bass. It had teeth on it, you know. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's a, it's a redneck security system. A woman in uh, the UK was looking through her boyfriend's photos on his phone, and uh, she got a little bit more than what she thought she was going to get. Okay. She found video of him having sex with her dog. Oh, no. Yeah. This, uh, this dude, 19 years old, admitted to the offense... With a uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier. No age on the Bull Terrier. And human or dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, if you say it in dog years, like it becomes much less like offensive. Like, yeah. oh, he was, you know, he was, <laughs> he was 56. Like, come on. He, he's a grown ass man. He can make his decisions. Hey, he yeah. lifted his leg. Yeah. That was on him. No, you should have. You should have seen how he was looking at that uh, at that at that fire hydrant. I was holding I was holding a sandwich, but hmm. it's, uh, this dude could not explain his behavior to the police, but claimed it only happened once. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, so if you're only going to do it once, really? Yeah. You kind of look like you knew what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> this whole time you were screaming, "This ain't my first rodeo." No. Yeah. Really weird. Yeah. No, that's. That's crazy, but that's why that's why you don't take pictures of anything. Hmm. Like they, they, <laughs> the dude uh, admitted to having cannabis, uh, cannabis, cannabis, 
He had a can of piss. He had a can of piss on him. He was using it to throw off the scent to confuse the dog into not running in the you know, not running away. I guess this is, yeah. this is this makes me sad, and I'm not like this. This actually does kind of make me sad. So he was taking these photos on her phone or his, on own? his phone. Oh, she, so she was she like, was "Oh, like, I'm going to be cute." She was like, oh, "No, she wasn't being cute. She thought he was cheating on her." Oh, because well, because his dick smelled like dog shit. <laughs> because he was. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Pup- it's it's always with, puppy. It's always with people who are close to you, you know, mm-hmm. or things that are close. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Uncle Terrier. Uncle Terrier. <laughs> I can't even. Hmm. I don't know. Just don't take just don't take pictures of anything. Like like live a life that is so unmemorable that you do not feel any need to document any given moment of it. And then that way, when you go, your caseworker can, your caseworker can just come in, put your furniture on Craigslist, and go. Just like just get on with everybody's life, right? Come on. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Probably exactly that. Memories is memories, man. <laughs> I suppose. Ugh, just makes me sad. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but you have to find love somehow. You really, some really way do. Or some way. You really, really do. There's nothing else in this world. There's nothing else in this world. Nope. Don't take pictures. It's all over. Chris, speaking We've reached of the end of humanity. Speaking of dogs, one last one to take us out, okay? Because I feel like we're on kind of a down note, and uh, we're ready. We're ready to, uh, to to say goodbye to heroes, right? The people who once acted as our moral compass, uh, you know, the, the the figures in our lives that we thought would never ever let us down, but we know now that that is an illusion. Whether it's be beeping in the beeb, or whether that's you know our boyfriend doing unspeakable things. Um, it's all, it's all one big mess. Chris, I'm disillusioned. And do you want to know why? Because John Russell Morales, okay, 41 years old, the actor who played McGruff, the crime dog has been sentenced to 20, nearly 30 years in prison for possession of 1000 marijuana plants, a cache of 30 weapons, including a grenade launcher and thousands of ammunition rounds. (laughs) A dope ass trench coat. <laughs> I know. What's I was always wondering, like, hey, what's he hiding? Like, is he trying to be like a like a Sam Spade character? Or is he trying to be uh you know, is this dragnet? Ha ha, right? But no, no. He was hiding like the mad chronic underneath that. I thought McGruff was black. Shotguns, pistols, rifles, military grenade launcher. Come on, dude. A grenade launcher? He was planning something. Ball bearing factory with a fuse. <laughs> but seriously, I thought he was black. Maybe. I don't know. Like just there's a Google image search we could probably do. Well, that sounds like a lot of work. But what, But I really did. I thought that he was like, you know, like a mix between like Morgan Freeman and James Earl Jones and uh what's the other one? Uh Ving Rames. No, not him. <laughs> uh, Lawrence Fishburne? No. Samuel L. Jackson? Don't think so. Okay. No, no, he's a, he's a Hispanic gentleman. Denzel. Denzel Washington? Okay. No, not him. Oh. Yeah. What huh. other wise black men do you know? I have got no idea. Hmm. That's, okay. most, of the, that, that's most of them from, uh, from film. Yeah, no, Larry Fish definitely qualifies. We're talking about wisdom. He broke us out of the Matrix. Hmm. Yeah. But no, no, I mean, it's funny that they called him the crime dog. Get it? (laughs) D-A-W-G? Yes, McGruff, the crime dog. By which we we mean he literally commits crimes. So here's the crazy thing. He was stopped at, like, it was a speeding stop, and drug-sniffing dogs were all like, hey, hey, check out this guy. Check out this guy. And he had diagrams of two indoor pot-growing operations and just, like, a bunch of marijuana seeds in his in his infinity. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Hide in the cause. Yeah. Some of the people screaming out about butt-fucking, how it shouldn't happen, or doing it. 
<laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No. Preachers, pastors, priests. The ones who don't want you to do it are doing it the most. Priestesses. <laughs> yes, druid priestesses in their henges, in their with with their runes. Led Zeppelin tried to warn us about it. <laughs> This has been Those Damn Roskets. I need more drank. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like purple drank? Like uh, promethazone or whatever? Or, I think promethazone is actually like dandruff shampoo. <laughs> no, that's zinc perithione. Huh. Yeah, that one. Yeah, okay. So you, you need to go drink some head and shoulders. The tangling you makes let you know it's working. You need to get your swerve on and then come back here. No, the, the tingling, I think you're thinking of Selsun Blue. Get my swerve on and come back. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you just, you, I'm going to go for a drive. I'll be right back. Yeah, no, you just you just get your lean. Swerve <laughs> on a dirt road. No, you, you, you just hop into your lean to. Swerving like I'm George Jones? <laughs> Who's George? Oh, swerving like you're Grace Jones? <laughs> Looking Crashing real scary? Like I'm Ted Kennedy. <laughs> Oh, man. No, I'm thinking of promethazine, which is fenugrin, which is the drug that I cannot take anymore because I lose control of my face. <laughs> I thought that was uh, Zithromax. No, no. I'm allergic to fenugrin. Compazine. Uh, no, compazine's fine. Oh, that's where your tongue unrolled, like a cartoon. Oh, thing. yeah. No, no. Fenugrin's the one I can take. It's a, uh-huh. it's a compazine that I can take. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, cool. No, fenugrin, that'll put you down for like a day and a half. Oh, fenugrin makes me see like ancient native <laughs> warriors. <laughs> see, it makes you see druid priestesses. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. It's crazy. I am Indiana Jones when I take fenugrin. <laughs> Unlocking ancient secrets. Hmm. So, I would like to thank everybody for uh, for for welcoming uh, welcoming us back. We've been back for a couple of weeks, and uh, the, the the numbers are up, and people have been uh, leaving comments to the effect of like, "Hey, we're happy to see you." Um, we would like to uh, you know uh, put it out to you guys. If you find any stories that you would like us to address, put them up on the Facebook group. That is facebook dot com slash those damn Ross kids. We will throw those into the pool, read them if they are uh, uh, you know ridiculous enough. We'll talk about them. That's all good. We want this to be a conversation, not just between us. But between us, right? So that's that. Uh, leave us a rating or review on iTunes. Uh, check us out here eventually on SoundCloud. Possibly by the time this goes up, I'll have that uh, all sorted out. Uh, but uh, but yeah. And if you're going to uh, be doing anything with uh, uh, money, if you're going to be buying anything off of Amazon, try using our link. That's uh, duckfeed.tv slash tip jar. Helps us out a lot. Did I miss anything, Chris? No, you got it. Sorry, America. Ooh, sorry, America. <laughs>